So Revelations comes immediately after Daniel's ascension last episode, and is also the final episode of the season, so it's going to be hard topping that. It kicks off with Thor showing up because a Gould ship is menacing a planet that's covered under the Protected Planets Treaty, meaning that, shockingly, it's protected. Well, there's just one problem here. This ship belongs to Osiris, and she works for Anubis, who has been stirring shit up all over. So while the ship does get smacked around by the Asgard, the shields nevertheless hold, meaning things aren't looking good as we head into the titles, even compared to normal. When we come back, Carter is going through Daniel's office and all the things that he left behind, because the thing about ascending into a being of pure energy is you no longer have pockets. General Hammond tells Carter that O'Neill wants them to remain on active duty, but she's aghast, seeing this as the same as Daniel dying and them doing nothing. She says there's no memorial planned, but Hammond points out Daniel is likely not even dead. But you can still see Carter's point of view. Memorials and funerals are to honor the dead and provide closure to the living. That Daniel has not ceased to exist as a conscious entity doesn't really change that for them. Indeed, if one believes in life after death, then the only real difference is that they actually saw Daniel move on instead of only witnessing his body shutting down but knowing in one's heart that they've gone on to something else. You don't have to call it a memorial, but a remembrance of Daniel Jackson wouldn't be out of place at all. Hammond tries to help Carter by talking about his experience in Vietnam, how one of his buddies was shot down, and even knowing he had survived, Hammond never saw him or heard about him ever again. And it kind of plays back to my point. So what did you do? I learned to live with it. That a memorial or remembrance is a way to give yourself closure and move on. But that's not for right now. The power is disrupted, so they head to the gate room where Freyr, not to be confused with Freya from Wednesday's Divide and Conquer, although Freyr is a better dresser, apologizes that they couldn't come last week on account of replicators. They get into everything, don't they? And now they've come needing a favor. Turns out that after that failed attack, Thor's ship was destroyed and he was killed. What's more, the planet the Gould are menacing has an Asgard scientist underground there, performing the most important research for the future of the Asgard, even more than that mounted fish that can sing, and they need to be rescued. Sounds like just the big damn heroes thing that we do around here, doesn't it? So, they take their Gould ship and head out on the mission. But not until after Carter gets mad at O'Neill that he says he's coping fine. Yeah, he thinks he can handle it. Just because he's had to deal with the deaths of comrades in arms, his best friend, and his own son. Are you not alright, Major Carter? Fine. Just so you know, if we're not boning, I don't have to play the I'm fine game. Don't give me that way of the warrior crap. I get enough of that from Colonel O'Neill. Daniel Jackson has ascended to a higher plane of existence. Many Jaffa have dedicated their lives to achieving such a goal. So I'm supposed to celebrate? You're entitled to your feelings, but your attempts to get others to feel what you do is starting to make it seem like Daniel's ascension is all about you. And keep in mind, I spent about a third of what I've discussed up until now saying you have a point, and you're starting to lose even me. So they arrive, cloak, and head into the atmosphere and land at the coordinates that Freyr gave them. Except now what? It's like Venus out there. Maybe not as hot, but definitely cook your lasagna levels out there, and it's full of CO2. How do they get in? Oh, right, you get downloaded. Waiting for them is Heimdall, and much like Thor is played by Daniel Jackson's actor Michael Shanks, Heimdall is played by Dr. Fraser's actor, Terrell Rothery, both of whom don't appear as their human characters in this episode, only little gray men. Heimdall is quite a gregarious sort, and makes clear that this is more than just a rescue mission for him, it's a rescue mission for Thor too. Turns out our little buddy's still kicking, but in the hands of the Gould. He managed to avoid the destruction of his ship in an escape pod, but it got picked up by the bad guys, and now they're going to try to get intel on the Asgard. That puts both Earth and the Asgard at risk, so it's important that we save him. It, somehow. Anyone have any ideas? This would be a good time for Daniel to pitch in. Heimdall can't beam through the shields. I bet Idris Elba could. But he can scan and project interactive holograms, 
So O'Neill is sent up to talk with Thor. But Thor says to go while the going's good. Anubis is on the way, and he's one bad mother. Thor wants them to just take Heimdall's research and get the duck out of Fodge. It's too important to let the Gould get a hold of it. Heimdall explains the Asgard race, as they are now, are clones. That's their sole means of reproduction, as the lack of any naughty bits clearly illustrates. In fact, for nearly a thousand years, we have been physically incapable of achieving cell division through meiosis. That's a long time to say you've been under pressure at work. The problem is that it's unsustainable. They can't just keep copying themselves for much longer. It's breaking down. Heimdall's working to find a solution, and that's what Anubis wants, which is why Osiris tells the Jaffa to head down in their gliders and start searching that way, regardless of the risk. Gould worry over Jaffa risks about as much as they do about not being overcharged on makeup. Well, one bit of good news, if Anubis is coming aboard, then there will be a window of opportunity. They can use their rings at the same time he uses his rings to get on the ship, then take down the shields so that Heimdall can beam them all down. To keep them abreast of things, Carter will stay down here to use the hologram talking thing. No, that's a suppository. They make it on board, but the rings were detected, so the bad guys start looking for them. Plus, Anubis and his entourage stroll right by them. That's got to be a sphincter tightening moment. Carter has no choice but to go with Plan B. Hey guys, what's happening? I always wanted to have the cojones to do what Arthur did in this situation. <laughs> my name is Arthur, and this is my diversion. But while that saves Tilk and O'Neill for now, Thor is still in trouble. This device be implanted into your brain. I don't think my doctor will approve that procedure. What this will do is link Thor's brain and the ship's computer, stealing his knowledge directly from the source. Although the downside is that you don't get to do the torture thing. And bad guys love to torture. You take away the fig leaf reason to do it and it just makes you look kind of mental. <laughs> 